There's three main ways you can edit with different aspect ratios in DaVinci Resolve and each one's got their own benefits and drawbacks. Currently we're in this 16 by 9 aspect ratio edit. This is in 4K UHD. The first thing you can do is actually change your timeline settings. So find your timeline in the media pool, right click, come over to the timelines menu and choose timeline settings. You can see here we're currently in 4K UHD with a width of 3840 and a height of 2160. If you click this drop down list, there's all of these presets for resolutions, but you can also create your own by simply typing in numbers here. Let's say we wanted to recreate that anamorphic widescreen cinema look with a 2.39 to 1 aspect ratio. All you need to do is divide your current width, in this case 3840, by the aspect ratio. So we're going to divide by 2.39. This gives us a new height resolution of 1607 rounded up. So now in here, we can enter 1607. Before you hit OK, make sure this mismatched resolution dropdown is set to center crop with no resizing. Click OK. And now you can see we've got this anamorphic looking aspect ratio. And if I hit Control F to go full screen, we've now got these black bars at the top and the bottom. The benefit of this approach is that these black bars at the top and the bottom, they won't be rendered into the final video file. So we're not going to be wasting storage space on encoding these black bars. It's going to be up to the playback device to add the black letterboxing. If you're using a really wide aspect ratio like this, you're probably going to have to select your clips come up to the inspector, and then adjust the vertical position up or down to create the framing that you want. The disadvantage of this approach is you can't mix multiple aspect ratios in a single video if you want to do that for dramatic effect. Let's go and reset this timeline to 4K UHD. The second method to simulate an aspect ratio is to just use the cropping tools built in to DaVinci Resolve. All we need to do is crop from the top and the bottom, and once again, change the wide position to create the widescreen look that we want. You're going to want to make sure that these two values are the same for crop, top and bottom. Watch what happens though if we change the Y position. We're just moving the whole thing up and down, which is not what we want. To prevent this, tick this retain image position checkbox here. And now when we move the position, it moves the image within that crop. Using this approach, these black bars will be baked into the final output. The disadvantage to this approach is it's not as easy to work out these numbers to get specific aspect ratios. The third way is to use pre-made PNG images that have a black bar at the top and the bottom and then overlay them on top of your footage. So if I come to the media pool, I've already imported these overlays. We've got the aspect ratios listed here. Let's go for our 2.39 to 1 aspect ratio like we did before and then drag this PNG over the top of your existing footage. And if we go full screen, you can see we've got this widescreen look and as before click on the video come up to the inspector and use the Y position to modify the framing. The advantage of this technique is you can quickly audition different aspect ratios by just dragging them over the top of your footage. You don't have to use any math to work it out. You can also get fancy with this approach. For example, if you want some parts of your video to be in 16 by 9 and then to create a cinematic look swap to a widescreen look. You can't just add a fade in here. That doesn't look so great, but what you can do is come to the start of this clip, use the zoom control here to zoom out on this PNG overlay. You may have to reset your Y position here so you don't get this black bar at the top. Come back to the PNG overlay, hit this button to add a keyframe, and then move a few frames along, and then reset the zoom to one. Now when you play this back, the widescreen effect will gradually come in. You can also right click on the red keyframe here and choose ease out if you want a more smoother transition.